Hey there, internet traveler. Thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin B. McBride. While I'm thanking you, I also want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Such good folks over there with all their tools to build stunning websites and help you get yourself noticed in this vast cacophony that is the internet. Thanks, Squarespace. As a guy who's made a few internet videos, I can tell you that almost anything I do is a mistake. And I know this because of all the perfect people who leave me comments about my mistakes. I sure am grateful I can get such good free advice all the time. I mean, all I have to do is post a video. After reading all those heartfelt comments, I've taken it upon myself to address some of the real overland and general adventure mistakes I've made, hoping that doing so will help you avoid making the same ones. So my keyboard warriors, crack your knuckles, prime your caps lock, it's go time. Mistake number one, forgetting items. If you were here for my Yellowstone trip, or if you're my wife, you know that I am pretty good at forgetting things when I leave to play in the dirt. It doesn't matter if it's a day trip or a multi-week expedition. I have always seemed to forget something. Back when I was working in architecture, it was pretty common for us to say that the simplest answer is often the best answer. And that absolutely applies here. If you don't want to forget something, tape all of it to your person. Okay, mistake number two. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Of course you can't tape it. Use glue, silly. <laughs> All right, enough jokes. Create a list. It's simple to do. Mentally walk through your whole trip. Think of what you're going to reach for during every step of your trip, and then write that down. Now you have your list of things you need to take with you. None of us are too cool for a packing list. In fact, it's a good idea to have multiple packing lists. Think of your different kinds of trips, the time of the year, and even the people that will be with you. Create a set of lists that cover all of these scenarios and you'll never forget anything ever again. Unless you forget to look at the lists or you forget which list. Like maybe you looked at your winter list and you should have looked at your summer list or you looked at your summer list, you should have looked at your winter list and you forgot snow boots. You know what I'm trying to say. Keep track of your lists and you'll never forget anything again. Mistake number two, practice makes perfect. Cliches aside, if you're like me, you love getting some fresh gear for your adventures. I'm excited about everything from collapsible toilets to differential lockers. The problem is, we sometimes just strap this fresh new piece of kit to our ride and then venture out. Avoid taking unused equipment with you. When you open your latest acquisition, play with it, test it out, learn as much about it as you can. Story time. For the longest time, I carried a high lift jack on my Tacoma. It sat back there looking cool AF all the time and giving me some serious overland street cred. Problem was, I'd never used it. Then it happened. While out on a trail with Mateo of Tacoma Beast, he blew a bead. This was it. We were finally going to get to do some trail fixing and use the high lift. We got it unbolted, firmly planted in the ground, and then began to work the lever's action until the truck lifted off the ground. Oh my gosh, it was working. This was when we really realized we hadn't properly practiced using this thing. It started to lean into his door, which is the last thing you want is body damage while you're trying to fix a flat tire. And we were learning right there in the moment that the high lift alone is not the best thing to support a vehicle while changing a tire. But because it was all we had, we just dealt with it. We got this tire swapped out as fast as we could, then we needed to lower the truck. Again, we were found ill-prepared and didn't realize how dangerous one of these stupid jacks could be. We fought with it until that pin, it's a tiny little pin that holds it up, finally budged and slam, the truck hit the ground. It was stupid. It was, ugh. It was one of the stupidest things we've done, and it's a lesson I will never forget. I will now always learn to use my equipment before I have to rely on my equipment. There you go. Print that on a t-shirt. Use your equipment before you have to rely on your equipment. Mistake number three, online only maps. I love to talk about route planning, and I have a ton of routes saved onto my devices. As a result, I'm often the one my friends turn to when it comes time to lead a route. The biggest mistake I've made in that moment of trust is not having the maps around my routes downloaded. The humiliation that comes with that is second only to being caught with your pants down. Don't be that guy. Add download maps to your checklist we talked about in mistake number one. Future you will thank you and your friends won't even know that because, well, they'll just assume that you're always on top of it. So don't expect a thanks from them. Just a quick tutorial here if you're curious on how to download maps. We'll start with Gaia. Select your route and then hit the I, then tap the three dots. And then download maps for track. Select the layers and the level of detail you want, then hit download in the top right. Boom, you're done. 
In order to download maps on Onyx Off-Road, you'll need to position the area of the map you want to download on the screen, then tap Offline Maps down at the bottom. Hit the New Map button, select your map resolution, and make any final tweaks to the area being downloaded. Now hit Save. This will add a green rectangle to your map, letting you know the areas that you've downloaded. You may have to do multiples for a single route where Gaia lets you do the whole route in one click. Mistake number four, free range meals. I don't mean free range in the sense that you're eating organic meals. I mean free range in that you're just planning to not plan. You're planning to wing it. I think we can all say that we've had that conversation. The one where we call up a friend, we're talking about the routes, the details, all the gear we'll need, and then food comes up. Ooh, I should call Justin about the route. All right, pick up, man. Ooh, Justin's calling. Yo. Yo. Dude, this is gonna be sick. <laughs> oh, dude, it's gonna be so sick. I can't believe we figured out the route, man. Like, Right, dude? I feel like I have planned this to the T, so much so I feel like I've driven it already. Like, do we even need to go, you know what I'm saying? So I guess this means the last thing to do is figure out meals, right? Okay, we could talk about food or we could just wing it. You know that grocery store that's in town right before the trail starts, the weird one? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I know that one. That's like the market where like nothing is ever name brand and everything feels like it's past the sell-by date. Yeah, exactly, that's the one. Yeah, so we'll just meet there, whatever. This trip is gonna be so sick, man. Absolutely stoked for it. Like, maybe we should talk about the route some more. Don't be like these two. Make a plan. Know what you're gonna eat for each meal. Coordinate meals with your buddies. Split things up. This will make cooking the meals just as fun as the adventure. And it will mean everyone will help clean up one small mess rather than individually cleaning up a bunch of messes. Mistake number five, a stinky camper. When it's nine degrees outside, it can be World War III convincing yourself to strip down for a simple wipe shower. I get it, I've been there. But be an adult, take care of your stink. Carry wipes and deodorant. Sure, it isn't the same as a full-blown shower, but it's the bare minimum, pun intended. How do you tell people that are adults to keep themselves clean? That's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, this last year, I started carrying the water port on the Jeep in the summer because you don't really want to take an outdoor wet shower when it's winter, so that's why it was on there in the summer. And honestly, what a world of difference it makes just to wash your hair, hose off your nethers, like you'll feel great, and whoever you're sharing a tent or a car with, they will thank you. Along those lines, dental hygiene is just as easy to ignore on the trail. Carry a toothbrush and use it. I know these sound simple, but we're all adults here, so it should be. Look, I've ignored these in the past, and I can tell you it's just better to take care of yourself, especially if you're in for a full day of windshield time. Nobody wants to be driving in a cesspool. <laughs> Mistake number six, overpa- Who in the world is calling me? Uh -huh. Hello? Yo, bro, it's me. And uh, I've got Justin with me. Hey, man. Hey, guys, what's up? Just shouldn't you be planning your meals? Oh, dude, yeah, we got that all sorted out. Like, we're just gonna grab something the morning of the trip. Yeah, like chips and bread and stuff. Ah, yeah, totally sounds like you guys have it figured out. They don't. Uh, anyway, I'm in the middle of recording a video. What do you need? Hey, I know you used to do this stuff, so that's why we're reaching out to you, but we're thinking of starting a website for our adventure blog and figured you might have some advice for us. A uh, website? Yeah. Squarespace is where it's at, my dudes. They have everything you'll need from templates that make your website look professional on any device the minute you start to analytics that help you understand what your audience actually likes. Okay, that, I mean, that sounds sick, but what about getting our .com and all that stuff dialed in? Ooh, yeah, he's got a point. I have no idea how any of that stuff works. Guys, domains are stupid easy with Squarespace. You can just buy your domain through them and it's automatically applied to your website. Super easy. You're done. Oh, this is happening. This is really happening. We're doing this. Right on, guys. Get on it. It's super easy. You'll probably have something up and running by tonight. Hey, I really need to get back to this video, though, so uh, I'm going to do that. Hey, but before I do, I can save you some money. I can save you 10% on your first order with Squarespace if you use my link, squarespace.com slash McBride. Whoa, yes. Yeah, they'll save you 10%. So just get on over there, get signed up, start your website. Like I said, you'll probably have something running tonight. Oh, dude, no way. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm making Justin pay for all of that, so doesn't I don't mind either way. Well, I'll let you two figure that out. I need to get back to this video. All right, get back to your video. Okay, bye. Sorry about that. Uh, the Justins seem like they're getting a little sidetracked from their trip planning. Hey, but if you're like us and you're living in 2021, well, maybe you should take advantage of the same deal. Start a website, get it up and rolling in no time with Squarespace. Squarespace.com slash McBride. Save 10% on your first order. 
How could you go wrong? Sounds like the Justins are gonna start a website. Hopefully that gets them and you taken care of. Which brings us to mistake number six, overpacking. This is the part where you say, but Justin, didn't you say in mistake number one that we shouldn't forget anything? Yes, but that means anything important or anything you'll actually use. Back when I had my Tacoma, I carried two massive totes because I had the room for it, and they were filled with every piece of camping gear I owned. It didn't matter if I was gonna use it or not, I still brought it with me. This is not the behavior you need when you're out on the trail. It creates clutter and ultimately adds unnecessary weight to your vehicle, which is just a butterfly effect for future issues. Take note the next time you're out camping. Look at the gear you're actually using, but especially the gear that's in your way. If you're constantly climbing over X to get to Y, then get rid of X. Work on that checklist we talked about in number one, so it's just the essentials, the stuff that you actually use. Like I was saying, I ignored this way too much with the Tacoma, and it ended up driving like a hippopotamus through half-dried cement. That poor truck hated me. Mistake number seven, putting mods before maintenance. Simply put, if it doesn't run, it doesn't matter if it's on 35s. Focus on keeping your ride on the road before working on what it can do on the trail. And I'm pretty sure that's it for number seven. Mistake number eight, poor communication. When I was just getting into this whole overland thing, I was always nervous about obstacles. It didn't matter what the obstacle was, I was nervous. The last thing I wanted to do is flop the Tacoma and have to call home to tell my wife I had done something stupid. I was more afraid of her reaction than like physical harm. I mean, who am I kidding? I still am, right? If I flopped Cool Rick, she would be pissed. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be happy either, so I can't blame her. Hey, anyway, what I'm trying to say is learn to communicate through obstacles. Hand signals and knowing your left from your right is crucial. Try using driver and passenger instead of right and left, and then speak clearly, right? Use hand signals. Get, just get the message across as clearly as you can, especially because the driver, they won't be able to really hear you over the engine. So clearly, loudly, dictate, left, right, 10 more inches. You know what I'm saying? A big key is to take control. If a driver has four different people yelling commands at them, it's only destined to end up becoming a mistake. If you're spotting, be the only one spotting. As the driver, roll your window down. Avoid the temptation to use the radio for spotting comms. It will take your hand off the wheel and distract you from getting through the obstacle. Never be afraid to ask for a spot either. If you aren't comfortable with an obstacle, don't try and be the cool guy. Just ask for help and get through it. Mistake number nine, this thing is built to drive anywhere. While your off-road capable vehicle is definitely built to do some amazing stuff, it doesn't have a brain. It's just a big metal pig that does whatever you tell it to do. If you're really interested in getting into overlanding and experiencing some of the more secluded areas of our planet, then be a force for good. Stay on the trails, treat the trails right. Washboards and whoops are easy to form when traveling at high speeds on soft trails. Ruts can cause permanent damage to trails and even closure, so avoid traveling in really wet rain whenever possible. As a good rule of thumb, look up Tread Lightly. I have linked them below. They are an incredible resource for all kinds of outdoor activities, not just off-road, and advocate for proper land use. Get involved with them and help improve the image of off-roaders everywhere. Mistake number 10, overlanding. When I worked for CBI Off-Road, I would attend almost every overland event with them and work their booth. We met a lot of people who were just cosplaying as overlanders. They had every mod under the sun, um, <clears throat> my old Tacoma, guilty, <laughs> but that event, be it Expo West, FJ Summit, Northwest Overland Rally, whatever it was, was their big overland trip for the year. I try my hardest not to define overlanding, but I know that camping in a fairgrounds with 100,000 other people is not it. Grab some buddies or your significant other and chase seclusion on a trip that tests your limits. See something incredible and create a story worth telling. We're all guilty of acting the part and anybody who says they aren't, man, they're in denial. So stop acting, start doing. That's what we're here for. That's that's why you're watching my video is you're like, man, I want to get better at this stuff. I hope all those help you out and inspire you to get out there and see something new. Have some fun. That does it for me. If you liked the video, then please like the video. If you have a question, leave me a comment. And if you want to hang out again, well, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, Justin B. McBride. Bro, you don't think, now hear me out. You don't think he recorded that whole conversation, do you? No, I don't think he would do any of that stuff to us. Dude, you're probably right, but like, what do you think of all that stuff about us going to the grocery store? Now that you mention it, dude, I don't know. That was kind of out of nowhere, wasn't it? Right? Almost like he heard our entire conversation. Freaking weird. Yeah, that was way weird.
hey, uh, do you want to come over and we can get started on this website together? Oh, dude, yeah, I'll be right over. Hey, what should we do for dinner? What should we do for dinner? I don't know, maybe just hit the grocery store on your way over. Seems like a good plan. That's a great plan.